Hello and welcome to How to Fix It. It should come as no surprise that I love the Beatles. They were a great band and produced some rockin' songs. And their films were pretty damn awesome. But what happens when you take a Beatles movie and remove the Beatles? If you think the absolute best parody of a rock opera ever made, you would be right. Today, we're taking a look at Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. But not the album. The Robert Stigwood-directed box office flop starring Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees. Well, it's a rock opera, and so the story is convoluted. So if you'd like to watch it, it's on Netflix, as of the time of me writing this review. And you can also watch Brad Jones's review, Pod Dugan's review, or my vlog about it to get a sense of what happened in it. I'll recap it here, though. Sgt. Pepper and his band helped win World War I and were a fixture in, in the fictional heartland where they came from. When Sgt. Pepper croaks, he leaves instructions to his grandson, Billy Shears, played by Peter Frampton, to form a new band when he's old enough, which he does with the Hendersons, played by the Bee Gees. Their manager is Billy's half-brother, Dougie Shears, played by Paul Nicholas. The main antagonist is Mean Mr. Mustard, played by the late Frankie Howard, who wants to steal the famed instrument so he can destroy Heartland. And the other bad guys are Dr. Maxwell Edison, played by Steve Martin, Marvin Sunk, the Sun King, played by Alice Cooper, and Aerosmith as the future villain band. It also has Lurk from the Addams Family movies as the henchman of Mr. Mustard. Billy's main love interest is Strawberry Fields, played by Sandy Farina, and the narrator and exposition dumper is Mr. Kite, played by the late George Burns. Musical instruments. These instruments have the power to make dreams come true. Also guest starring is Billy Preston, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Guard, and a whole host of other famous people from the 70s at the end. The music was pretty good, except for She's Leaving Home, which was sung by two robots in gimp suits with the voice of auto-tuned Stephen Hawking. But for the most part, the music was stellar. You really can't go wrong with the Bee Gees, Peter Frampton, Alice Cooper, and Aerosmith. Plus, Steve Martin was a welcome part of the cast. I'll admit, the movie is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me. I mean, it does have my favorite arrangement of Nowhere Man. And if you're watching it for the music, you get what you pay for. Oh, where to start? Well, the plot is nonsensical, the villain's motivations are unclear, and the ending comes straight out of left field. Even with George Burns giving us the exposition, many things are left unclear about the characters. Why does Mr. Mustard want the instruments? I don't know. Why does future villain band want to stop Sgt. Pepper? Why is Donald Pleasant playing a radio executive? No, seriously, that's Donald Pleasant. How come when their balloon crashed into the plane, they were suddenly in the plane? Is that the real Strawberry Fields or is that a clone? Why did they have the robot sing She's Leaving Home? 
Hey, I think a version of me in a parallel universe is having a mental breakdown. I'm not crazy, am I? Yeah, I didn't think so. Could you imagine if I was crazy? Okay, that's enough of that. What I also want to say is that it fails as a serious rock opera because it doesn't have what, say, Repo the genetic opera had. Compelling characters and a plot that makes sense. I wasn't invested in Strawberry Fields' character, to be honest. She really had no substance, and while I won't knock Sandy for in the singing, I tuned out of the plot and just listened to the music for most of it. Give it a sensical plot. I kid you not, I have no idea what happened in that movie until someone left a comment on the vlog I did that explained the plot. I don't know how they were able to figure it out, but they did. Also, the film should at least try to get you invested in the characters. Why should I care that Strawberry Fields died when Billy Preston can just make another one? Oh, and don't let the robot sing! She's Leaving Home is such a great song. But this movie was the first time I'd ever heard it. And I didn't like it. But that's pretty much all I can say about this movie and how you can fix it. So that was Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It wasn't the best movie, but it is a guilty pleasure for me, and for the most part, it's one of those so bad it's good films. Like I said, it's on Netflix, so if you have that, go and watch it. And listen to the actual album, it's really good. And hey, there's another film that takes Beatles songs and weaves a narrative through them. See you next time. Now to cool the pace. The BD, Big Disco Show, brings you Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. He's a real nowhere man, sitting in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans a nobody. Doesn't have Hey, I think a version of me in a parallel universe is having a mental breakdown right now. Am I crazy? Yeah, I didn't think so. Mm-hmm.